Hey, you are now part of the Morning Look Podcast. I'm Fine Wine. I am Innocence. And we got a special guest. One of the core DJs. Yes, sir. You feel me? Uh, DJ Climate. You feel me? Shout out to him for coming through. Hey, can you tell the people who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is DJ Climate. Uh, DJ, anything to do with music. Uh, audio visual, uh, technician, uh, radiology. Uh, I do all that radio personality, anything, journalism, everything. So I try to get my hands in everything. I'm okay. making beats. I'm not making people rap. Oh, you make beats? Yeah, man, I got beats in the, in the corner, man. You said all of a He's a real DJ. Yeah, yeah, that's all he's saying. That's all he's saying. So how did you get in the game? Uh, let me think about that. Way back when I was in college, Central Missouri, little, little town. Central Missouri used to be CMSU. Now UCM, there was a DJ there. They used to DJ all the parties. Uh, I came in my freshman year, coming to parties, getting invited, checking out. I uh, wanted to find my way of means of income, find mm-hmm. this DJ sitting behind the stage, uh, behind the booth. You know, captured my eye, something I was wanting to do into. Went into the school as, for music technology, studying music. Mm-hmm. So I figured I needed to get away. I didn't want to go back home and ask my mom for money, ask my peoples for money. Yeah. Had to find a revenue. So I just mm-hmm. started kind of picking up and learning about how to DJ at a club. Uh, that, same, that same summer came around. He had to actually go back to his hometown, which is a big city, and he was the only one DJing most of the urban parties at that time yeah, at the school. Feel the gap. So he left. I was really watching him. He like told me, say, you know, the next part I got, I'm just gonna let you do it. Kind of the rest is history. He wasn't there. I kind of came in, tried one time. Somebody mm-hmm. trusted me, and uh, went from there. And you ain't DJ none before that. No, I didn't. I, I practiced. I actually so that that freshman year I went in when I was going to the parties. And I was watching the DJ. I was always in the booth. I was going mm-hmm. in and watching. I go to the club. So that summer, which would have been the end of my freshman year, that summer I had some money and I went to the guitar, uh, guitar center, mm-hmm. oh. local guitar center. They yeah. had like a three hundred dollar kit DJ turntable and software. So I bought that. Uh, I was, early investing. Yeah, early. Already. But early in the day, I had it was only it was actually something on the computer before that was called Atomics. Okay. Atomics DJ. So you could really download it for free. Mm-hmm. And it was you could put it on your computer. All you needed was a computer. And that's what I was DJing off of. And so the first part of actually DJ was a wrestling party. Uh, that year, the wrestlers won like a championship, and they was having a party, a house party. Mm, okay. And they knew that I was learning how to DJ. Yeah. Some of the deep wrestlers knew me. Um, you know, it was a majority you know, Caucasian crew, but it was had a couple black wrestlers on there. So it was like, yo, you know, you're working. Come DJ this house party. That's hard. Brought in my house speakers, and everybody came to that house party. Mm. It was like. They made wristbands and notes and people pass out doing all the schools. So you gotta think, my freshman year of college, there's about 12,000 people at the school. So you gotta think, yeah. wrestlers is all kinds. It's Thanks. not just urban, it's everybody. So, Peter's big house, about three story, three levels. Uh, attic, upper level, regular level, and a basement. Yeah. I had enough speakers to go through each level, probably almost each room. We had yeah. big speakers, little speakers, and everybody was yeah. like, yeah, we doing you. Yeah. From there, it was some uh, Greeks in that party. It was, you know, ABC. It was mm-hmm. people from school in that party. So they was like, yo, we're going to use you. Man. Period. Chopper from there. That's how I started. Yeah. 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 I, I first heard you DJ, and this was 2012 when Espionage was going to EXO. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that's when I started doing the nightlife a little bit more, and then we took a few pictures, and it was like the assembly. That's mm-hmm. what I did. 2012 was about the year that I graduated okay. from college. Mm-hmm. So I was just coming out of. The college scene in which uh, you know Espionage was the Ono series, Ono celebrations, mm-hmm. uh, boy Ono, and uh, sure. he was always before then doing parties while mm-hmm. I, we was at school. So when the when we would come home for breaks, he always had a special party to do yeah. for break, and mm-hmm. I would come home That's for nice. break. But he always wanted a different vibe. So Espionage was a big part of my mm-hmm. my career. I think it was part of all of it. Yeah, yeah, at that point it was still raw. Yeah, and you were <coughs> at that point. Exo was. You know, two stories. Mm-hmm. So you facts, had the bottom facts, rocking, facts, bro. Facts, facts. And the thing was, even before EXO, I used to DJ at this party uh, at this club that's in that was in the Loop area. Yeah. Kind of where they you know they redid the Loop because of the school, but mm-hmm. it's called 609. Right. So a lot of people was going to 609 on certain days, getting that vibe that kind of espionage expanded upon. Okay. So okay. I got the from Ono coming into that place where I was kind of came in off of another DJ. Who was like, you know, had that vibe of 609. They wanted that similar vibe, mm-hmm. just on a broader scale. And Ono was able to create that scale, and I was able to create that vibe. So, so what do you think your vibe is, though? Mm-hmm. Uh, you it's it's my name. 
That's where climate comes from. Shit. Control. That's what I said earlier. Control. The you don't know what the weather's gonna be. You don't know what it's gonna be. So you don't know what kind of party it's gonna be. So it's just you know you just hopefully ninety degrees. You either gonna be in the rain. You are gonna be out in the cold. You are gonna be heat. You are gonna be hot. You only gonna get it done. You gonna stay in the house. It just depends. But everybody gonna want to party some type of way. So I just change it up whenever I can. That's where my name come from. That's how so, with like the people that you do have that that book you, right? Mm -hmm. Is it more so you already knowing that you're gonna give your vibe, or is it catering to them in what they already listen to? I think it comes from me getting educated from the game. I think as a DJ, you have to be able to be an actor, a creator, mm -hmm. um, you know, a writer, or author. You gotta be able to do it all in a split second because you know a lot of people go to. Uh, uh, a, a terror movie to get to get scared. Yeah. Right, right, right. A lot of people go to an action movie to see action. You know, there's no really movie that, that some movies can get all of it. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying, but when you go to a party and you DJ, you getting ten thousand, five thousand, five hundred people of different type of vibes, and each person is coming for their yeah. vibe. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying. So wow. as a DJ, wow. you got to be able to get everybody's vibe at once. Mm -hmm. And also be able to please the place, the location, the people. Yeah. And you got to be able to adapt to that. And it could be scary, it could be hard, it could be easy, it just depends. So you got to be able to recognize it one. So it's right. hard, something you got to be able to read, just like people got to read music. You got to be able to read a crowd, you got to read the vibe. <coughs> mm -hmm. If this vibe not working, can you switch it up? Do you know only this vibe? So I, I, try, to, I try to study all vibes. I try yeah. to study all music, all content, all ways of be able to get into your soul and move you. Yeah, that's right. So. Oh, there we go. I see that. Yeah. But that's yeah. what it is. It hit it. I think it stopped recording. Oh, no, that was me. Oh, okay, cool. Bet. <clears throat> um, so, what has the experience been like, you know, since you've been started, you know, since DJing and now, what, 2020? Uh, as far as from since I started, yeah. I mean, you definitely can see growth, i say, from when I started. Um, I definitely had this. Um, you know, I really didn't know if I was going to get into it, you know, mm -hmm. coming as, you know, finding your talent in school, you know, you go to school to try to find out what you want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you don't get the blessing of being able to fall into something that you want right. to do. True. So, uh, right. and then too, since I fell into something, I didn't know if that was something that I wanted to do. Right. Or was I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So I think at that time I was just figuring it out, coming from figuring it out to realizing that you can create something on your own. I definitely think this came a long way. I went from, you know, hoping that somebody would call me or waiting for somebody to call me to book to being able to book now a team of DJs because I'm over getting called, you know, so right. that's a blessing in itself to grow from being able to only be wanted by people that, that trust you, but now I'm able to tell people, hey, I might not be available, but trust me to get you somebody just as good mm -hmm. to make sure your day good, that's and they trust now your judgment more so than just your talent. Now they trust your word. Yeah. So that's growth in itself to be able to expand that to where I can go now from waiting on a gig to be able to get in gigs in the next year mm -hmm. and guaranteeing and promising that so it's, it's, it's a real good growth that's real so what are some things do you think that you should look out for like a dj or like coming up in the industry uh i think it's, if a dj like gets in the industry i think one first for, and that's what anything foremost i mean i just i probably sum it up as doing uh doing the kobe you got i okay. I, I when i first bought my equipment mm -hmm. i didn't just look at it i literally Play dj i dj minimum three hours and that's not even exaggerating i would go to class mm -hmm. get my homework done do my work go dj at the house and they, i didn't have to have anybody around me i'd have my own headphones mm -hmm. i didn't need anybody i'd go in my dorm i had nothing but a dorm room and some computer speakers yeah that i got from the uh from the pawn shop in the local in the local town mm -hmm. and i just dj in the practice and i did that every day every day when i first bought came home i did it for three months straight before I even got into the school, and nobody knew, I did it for three months straight in practice. Mm -hmm. Dedicated every day, I didn't miss a day. Mm -hmm. I came back to school and then I knew what I was doing, so now I was able to practice with people. So, it's, dedication is key. If you ain't gonna work on it, you might as well not do it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, another thing, you gotta have determination. Three, you gotta have a plan. Uh, I dealt, you gotta have a solid plan, and soon you have to have a team. I definitely can't mm -hmm. get it, you know, from where I was by myself to where I'm at now with my team. Ain't no way. And you gotta yeah. have a team. <laughs> yeah. And if you really wanna get it, you gotta have a team. So, so let me, I don't mean to cut you off. So yeah. you st you're talking about a team. So how has your budget, you don't gotta give me give a number, but what has, how has your budget changed? What things did you have to implement in your budget to have a team? Uh, So you definitely, I mean, you're not getting nothing for free. All right. All right. So budget is key. You wanna be able to budget. So 
the first thing you got to do is really, I mean, if you can't do it yourself, then you really don't want to even get a team if you can't really budget for yourself. So for me, for myself, I had to literally had to learn how to budget, you know, in college, I, I didn't have a big car and a big truck, so I had to learn how to budget time, time to how to get equipment. to places. Oh, yeah. I had to learn how to budget. I, if I don't have the equipment, how can I get the equipment? Where can I get the equipment? How much is the equipment going to cost? Mm -hmm. How much now do I got to charge knowing budgets and things of that nature? So that it, it learn to teach you a lot. And then, too, you got to be flexible because everybody's not the same. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like it's a personal thing every time. Mm -hmm. And so then you can be able to gain that establishment. So you sometimes you lose at the beginning. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you come out even, sometimes, you know, it just depends. I done took some gigs where I didn't charge as much, but when I budgeted, the trip might have cost more than, than the gig. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, though, that trip also gained a lot of yeah. more. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it would have paid, it might not have paid off right then and there, mm -hmm. but, but it would have paid off later on in the end. So things like that. Um, two, you gotta have, you gotta have time value. If, if one thing you can't get past in life, I think you gotta value time. Mm -hmm. So if you can't topple over time, you gotta value your time. I had to value my time in school and what it gave me. Uh, luckily, when I found out that I wanted to try to learn a DJ, I was already applying and going and studying uh, music technology, which required music, you know, audio technician, learning how to build studios, learning how to run wires mm -hmm. from the basics up. So now I don't have to need nobody to hook my equipment up. Yeah, you know, right. I know how to hook up my equipment and I know the range and I know the room size, I know what equipment I need. Uh -huh. Three, I was blessed to say, all right, put all these together and let me go apply for a job that probably I can get into trouble to this day probably, but it's so funny because I worked for the school union. Mm -hmm. So I had keys to everything. So I had keys to the audio mm -hmm. rooms that had speakers yeah. that I didn't need to rent because yeah. I was the one that was taking them and I'm setting them up anyway. at the school. <laughs> yeah. So I would set things up for meetings and I would still have extra speakers over from the school and I knew I had to go out of town and we can go do a gig, but I was working during the week. Mm -hmm. I knew we, I would go in there, in take awesome. speakers, Period, I would take them speakers, take them up to what I do, but I would charge for speaker equipment yeah. if I had to do that. Yeah. Just like, you know, supply and demand, mm -hmm. risk factor. So I would charge for that and I was in the budget. So then I would learn then, I would never go anywhere by myself. I budgeted for my team. Mm -hmm. Places to stay, food, mm -hmm. things that they to teach me, say, all right, if you're doing this, you just at least come with me to make sure I'm good, to help you with my equipment. Mm -hmm. I can at least budget this I for you. Do this. Yeah. And that teach you how to budget. That makes sense? Yeah. That makes all the sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I guess with, you budgeting and things like that. What at that point do you think you did not need? Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it something that like some people have regrets? You know what I mean? And some of us are talking like, all right, it's no regrets. Like you just learned mm -hmm. and this it was necessary regardless. Mm -hmm. So do you have any regrets during the process that you feel like, you know what? I should I didn't even need to go through that. Like I, I did I did that step four times over mm -hmm. and I just kept messing up. <laughs> I'm gonna say to that, I think a lot of people say they wanna say it regrets. I don't look at them as regrets. No. I look at them as lessons learned. Mm -hmm. So yes, there were things I could have done in the past to what I know now. Thank goodness I was able to recognize what I should have done then. And I could take that, but like, I right, let me apply it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I should have had already more made, maybe mixtapes and and mm -hmm. things to pass out and more okay. flyers, and more hard. cards back in college to have people. Maybe I should have made <clears throat> invested in putting more money to making a T-shirt with my name on it mm -hmm. and giving people those and saying everybody who I touch in the party, these coming in. Maybe I should you know saying apply myself to saying hey, if you want me to DJ, I need a piece. You know saying to budget more at that time. You know saying, but now that I know now. I know how to do those things now. I got a team that now I got a company that we do shirts that we do when you come in. We it's a whole company now. So yeah. I've taken what I might not have done then, and as long as you can apply it, it's never mm -hmm. too late. I think that's what people trip off of. They think it's too late. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. So I think that's what I've learned. It's not a regret. It's just let me take it and yeah. see what I can do with it now. So yeah, I think that's how I look at it. Let us take a pause real quick. Can you just stop yeah. it and, and start it again? We back, you know what I'm saying? So let me ask you a question, man. Yeah. So how important is it to expand your brand and what does that actually look like? Um, that's mm -hmm. it. It's as important as how much money you want to make. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 How to make sure ready to go on. Let me go. Check, oh, check. Right. Yeah, it's as important as how much money you want to make. If you want to expand uh, your brand, I mean, to get the most market, really, you got to be creative. 
you and you you, have, you can be creative. You can be sick, you can be whatever you want. It's just you got to stay on it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, my main thing, yeah, consistency is key. So my main thing was always word of mouth. What I've definitely taken and learned, what I've definitely implemented more is follow up. Mm -hmm. I learned that from actually working nine to five jobs. I call them regular nine to five jobs because mm -hmm. I, uh, me, I just try to not take too much excitement to a nine to five. I try to encourage it more for the personal. Thing. <laughs> but uh, but I learned a lot of stuff for the nine to five jobs. You know what I'm saying? Um, my, those jobs taught me how stern they are to say to make those follow up calls, those callbacks, mm -hmm. those things that was just so annoying to do mm -hmm. at the jobs. But right. then when you take it and apply. It, you realize how important it was. Yes, so and then with, in, a, in a job like mine, you know what I'm saying, when you get like I'm not dealing with a person that comes to get the same same pack of Marlboros or the same Skittles bag. I'm looking for the Skittles bag and I gotta attend to each color in that bag. And okay, so like that. you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I got to attend to each client that comes my way because each of those clients may want something different. So if you take care of one of them clients, you mostly gonna get another client from them. Mm -hmm. And if you don't see that as branding the marketing the right way, then you've lost half right, of your right, half right. of your budget that we talked about earlier. <laughs> so, no. so and then you've also wasted the time that you said was so valuable. Because mm -hmm. why wouldn't you want to capitalize from doing a great job at one? And you can say, I did such a great job at one, I create five more. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, networking, it's key. Bro. Yeah. Networking. networking is key. Yeah. 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 Branding is key. Um, Especially with social media. You, in, the, in that case, how big do you think self awareness is for you? Um, as far as self awareness, as far as the market, what's or your, what do you self growth? Because I mean, in the process, since if you're doing your leveling up the right way, mm -hmm. then you're gonna need to know yourself because you can get lost in the sauce on your way up. I think it's a up. lot of I think it's a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. I think if you're self aware of the goal, because I think you can be self-aware and be great and still be lost. Okay. So, okay. it, it's it, it it and that means you you could be lost in other things. You can still be great, mm -hmm. and you can still be on top, mm -hmm. but you still might not be aware. Yeah. So as far as me, it, it's very important to be aware. I think that goes with the overall aspect. So for me to be great in what I want to do as a DJ, because I want to provide for my family and make a means. I gotta be self-aware of surroundings, situations, atmosphere, and you know, health, mm -hmm. mental. I gotta be self-aware of all of that. Mm -hmm. Do I have to do all that to be a great DJ? No, I could just practice every day, but still not be aware of my family, my kids, and my needs. Mm -hmm. So self-awareness is great because you wanna have all of that and be aware to be able to do it properly to where if you're not aware of other things around it, any that, that mm -hmm. could be taken Fact, away at, yeah. mm -hmm. at any point in time, and it's something that damage that factor. So I think you have to be self aware. So I would say yes. That's definitely true. Cause I mean, like you was talking about when you was you would do your work, so when you go to school, you do your work, and then you go do three hours. Ah uh, yeah, uh, I had that discipline. You know, yeah. so what? So that was discipline look like to you. You know, and something when you talk to older folks, sometimes they're like, "Oh, you got to do this, do that." But what does that actually look like? So if you had to illustrate what discipline and hard work and dedication looks like to somebody that doesn't understand what it looks like, mm -hmm. what it, how would you explain that? Uh, I, I think the best way maybe that I could put it is what's coming to mind is how someone put it to me uh, when I was in seventh grade band class. Mm -hmm. My band teacher said, you know, and they were strict. He would tell people, I was at the end of the year, he was like, you know, you're going to graduate, but he could tell like, you're going to graduate, but you might make it far. Mm -hmm. You're going to graduate, but you're just going to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, he said to me, he said, Chris, you're going gr to graduate and you're going to be somebody. He said, because of one thing, you always go after and find that person that is better than you. Mm -hmm. And you want to become better than them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something like the key of what you're asking. So it's never satisfied. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Never comfortable. Yeah, I feel that. So I think that's what hard work looks at. You can be a hard worker and say you're the best, and then somebody, that, man, I can give I a work. prime example. The uh, the Fury Wilder fight. God, yeah, mm -hmm. the, man. And 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 so I was. It's always gonna be somebody coming for that thing. Yeah. And then first off, got beat the first time. 
So you gotta okay. think, man. If you if you already knew how it was gonna happen the first time, why wouldn't you have them more prepared? Why would you even do that to yourself with the mm -hmm. excuse that you give about the forty pounds? Why would you weigh your legs? I didn't know you need your legs for this big mm -hmm. man. Why are you doing those things? Mm -hmm. The question comes to why. If you can't answer that yourself, then what are you doing? Why would you not self aware? Mm -hmm. yeah. So those are the things you gotta think. Like you know, you comfortable at where you at? Because you on top, you undefeated, you are great. But there's always somebody coming somebody for that. Coming. And and then, then when you get there, now you got to realize it's two people in the ring. Yeah. Somebody got to lose. Somebody, somebody. Yeah. can't be a tie. So know. when I go to those yeah. things, I think of it like that. You know, somebody going to come around and be better than me. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody out there better than me. Yeah. Let me go find them go before find they them. find me. Mm. I think that's what takes it. <coughs> that's what hard work looks like. I feel that way. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. Like it ain't no excuses. Like that's like my brand. Like that's that's purely what we be on. It's like like I told you earlier. Ain't no excuses. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's circumstances is different. <clears throat> Everybody saying they putting in work, and then some people get mad because they don't get credit first. They don't get they don't get credit, and, and just based off what they feel like they were working. Mm -hmm. And it's like yo, you can't even worry about that because when that come and you know you've been working, you've been doing what you're supposed to. Right. That's gonna speak for itself. Right. So ain't no excuse for you to slack, ain't no excuse for you to sit there and, and, and dwell on something too long and act as if you can't change it. You gotta get it done. You gotta get it done. You gotta get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Who made it work? Who made it work? Made it work. Made it made it work. Made the best. You know? So I try to get it done. Exactly. Okay. So in that time of you learning and doing all of that, what do you think your favorite event was? That, that, and, and I might cater yours a little bit different. What event do you think taught you the most? Mm. I'm going to switch yours up. How, which event do you think taught you the most? I'll say I'm not going to put it on an event. Mm -hmm. I will put it on a location that taught me the most. And I'll say the Dew Drop Inn in Warrensburg taught me the most about who I could be and what I could do. Um, the Dew Drop In was a club in Warrensburg where I went to school at. It was the only club owned by a black person in the town. The town was was cre was founded and had a slave farm, slave everything, the whole town. Slave owned, slave made back in the historic times. Yeah. And so for that person to be the only black person to have a club about, 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 it's about 10, eight, eight, 10 miles outside of, the, outside of the town of the school. But it was enough, it was about 10, 15 minute drive for anybody that knew had a car, had a way to get there. Shuttles was there. And this club was where every black organization, black Greek organization, black affiliate, black person, black local, they would know about this mm -hmm. club. This is where my, the first DJ that I looked at knew about this club. Mm -hmm. So that club, me getting that relationship with not the club, but the owner as well, I was able to capitalize on way more than what I could bargain for in life because at that first step and ground of age, if I think about it, I just got into the game and I had a club under me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once they started trusting me and people was like, yo, get this man for this club. And then me being in that club so much, it is, it, I didn't attach my name to the club. The town and the people and the people attached, for, attached my name to that club. So now I'm not just the DJ, I'm the DJ at this club. Mm -hmm. And so I think that place gave me probably the most lesson because I learned how to cater to so many different people because where that was located, so many different people came. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was able to trust me with so many different people, I was able to make a means of living in a way, not just for me, mm -hmm. but for what I was connected to, me being Greek, part of Phi Beta Sigma, I not only created a place where they could be at to mm -hmm. generate revenue, but for the whole Divine Nine to be like, hey, we got a person inside and now we can use him also because we know he's going to do great. Yeah. We got the link with him and now he knows how to have that relationship established. So now all those things, now me being in that club, he now has more leeway to have a longevity of getting more money from the school that they might not even gave. So mm -hmm. to learn that, to see how much connections you can create, and how you can create mm -hmm. showed me a lot, I think, to what I can use now because I know how I can create myself and create branches for my team. That's mm -hmm. it. So. Okay. I like that. Yep. So you got any future plans or goals coming up? Yeah, man, I'm trying to uh, get back to like average and like try to get to these uh, tour shows. I really want to go on tour, uh, create a tour, and start getting more of the those tour crowds. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, 
great traveling with clubs and locations, but I definitely get on tour. Mm -hmm. I like tour life because it uh, focuses on like the atmosphere and the feel and get into the soul of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's nothing like hearing people sing with you and mm -hmm. you play their favorite song. It's, it's almost like going to your favorite artist. When you get a DJ at that live show, I've done it before, I've opened up for J. Cole. Mm -hmm. And when you get that and people sing with you and they get excited for every song because they're not the radio, you're their, you're their radio and they don't know what's coming next, but they know you about to spit some fire. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's an adrenaline, it's fun. Uh -huh. So I think that's going to be the goal for next year. Um, definitely team. I got my team that I mean we're getting into pop-up shops, traveling, branding. Um, uh, we're getting David Douglas out there. We got, I got so many other groups and organizations. I'm getting people's music out. And my next key 2020 is to get really a lot of more artistry out there so to help mm -hmm. artists kind of get their right together. Yeah. And actually even be able to look presentable and branch out the right way. Okay. You know, so. So that's the goal for next year. That's real. All right, so this is the new set. Well, not a new segment, but this is the segment we usually do now. It's called the Spitfire Round. Spitfire. Okay. Okay. So you know, I'm yeah. going to a drink. Yeah. First thing to come to mind. Okay. All right, you ready? So is there anybody you like to work with or meet? Hold on. I'm spitting my head. Mm -hmm. I'm taking a drink with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are real Spitfire. Oh, no, yeah. Huh. I see, because you know what I'm saying. Reality yeah, is, somebody they gonna see this, mm -hmm. and when they see it, Come on, if that you know what I'm saying, it comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. At that point, it's kind of just like you speaking into existing air. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I see she's in the I'm just like. <laughs> All right, let's go. Right. Let's go. Let's go. So this is the fire round. You know what I'm saying? So the first thing that comes yep. to mind. Yep. Let's you ready? Go. Yep. Is that your camera? That yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. So it, uh, is, there any, is there anybody you like to work with or meet? All right. So if I had to meet somebody, I wouldn't mind meeting DC Young Fly. Like, okay. Like I like where his energy is. Yeah. I, I still want to work with what is. Okay. Yep. Um, if there was any type of movie that you would be in, what would that be? All the Fridays. I'm done. I yeah. Mean, I okay. Like, give me the Fridays. Oh, what, mm -hmm. Okay, now. Okay. And Fast and the Furious. What role? Now, like, what? What? Man, let me get Smokey Cuz. Let me get New Smokey. Let me get. Smokey. Okay. <laughs> he said. He said. I want to be Cuz. <laughs> we got to go to the gas station. As long as I don't want to go to the gas station on the Friday, you got somebody. Oh, uh, so what's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? Uh, I think of how I'm gonna provide for my family and uh, when I'm gonna do the uh, excel myself to the next level. Okay. Hot or cold. He DJ climbing, you hear Both. everything. Yeah, all of the above. You know, you, 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 you wouldn't even I give you that one. I had to put that into perspective. Get you somebody that can do that. All of the above. Emos or pie? Emos. Cool. Okay. What's your favorite pair of shoes of all time? Air Force Ones, Jordan 11s, and 12s. Okay. 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 Okay.
See, but the ones he gave very valid. He didn't say drive a plane because he don't know. How I got the superpowers to fly. <laughs> oh, he brought. Hey, that's. Hey, he said. This was a question. I'll be back. So hey, right. Okay. I okay. Got, I'll be back. I ain't mad at it. You I know ain't what? mad at it. Come on, rapid fire. That's, 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 that's resources. Weekends are weekdays. <laughs> all of the above. Okay. It's all got the week in it. I ain't mad at it. Uh, <laughs> I like that. If you grew up with anybody dead or alive, no language barrier. No. No language. Who would you work with? Marshmallow. Marshmallow. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. He don't even talk. So. Okay, I know what you're talking about. If I can learn what he can do, he don't even talk. Mm. Marshmallow, he got the mask on the DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, talk to Marshmallow. You put a mask on, make millions of dollars, and not I take nothing to nobody. That's the best language ever. Never. Even Ray Charles had to talk. Thanks. Technically, we don't even know if Marshmallow can see. That's how that's, we don't even know. Well, I mean, that's, that's true. Might be the weed talking. I don't know. No, smart no. Than me. It, I mean, mm. it makes sense, actually. True. Everybody else got to speak. He ain't said not one word. Not nothing. He ain't you know, said not been one word. I mean, fact. ain't said not yeah. one word. That's like 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 when Weekend first came if out. You nobody knew his face. Ain't nobody, know. nobody knew his face. They was just like, we hear a great voice. <laughs> and then he showed how, himself. And I want to see how he do it. I just want to see how he do it, man. Put a mask on this one. I feel it. Well, you, hey, it might work for you. So yeah. we got another segment. Okay. Saying, when you posted this. What did it mean? What did it mean? Uh oh. So, Y'all close up my post? I hey, you know. No, and so what the, what's going to happen is it's going to show on camera. Oh, no, shit. Right there somewhere. Oh, no, shit. In this. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yikes. <laughs> Got the pop up. Yeah. Bow. That was it right there. Okay. Uh, this right here. So that meant a lot to me. Um, That's, that's significant because one, that was just, that was just real authentic. Um, two, I practiced that pose for a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I gotta get right. You gotta get that dick. You had to get that dick. You had to get that dick. In that pose, I had to get that arm buried. That was a fresh tap. That was, yeah. all that is commemorable. That whole thing. It was just, it, it, it shows that, you know what I'm saying? Anything can be achieved, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You can do it on your own. You can do it with creativity. And that just shows that, you know, built from the ground up, people didn't believe in what, what that could be done. Yeah. And it was done and it was over with. And now it's like, all right, can nobody take that away from me. Yeah, I, I show mine off anytime I can. Yeah. Sit in the right up. I, I actually know it's crazy. I wake up to that every day. Yeah. So I look at that on the wall every day. That's yeah. hard. Yep. Second pose. All right. So this is actually crazy. So this is actually crazy because it's got a story behind it. It's like a lot of stories. So how significant now what it is right now is crazy because this man right there, he yeah. taught me. He's my mentor. So that's Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan made a group called the 24 Scientists. It was mm-hmm. named after Kobe Bryant. Oh. But it actually comes from creativity of uh, back in the day, if you look up the story about the 24 Scientists, it goes into more religious views about how it was a group that was moved over in uh, Egypt and everything of that nature. It shows a little story. I can look it up. Okay. But uh, that's really significant because that was the first time he was DJing on the Grammys for Run DMC. And the fact that I'm in this group and uh, I'm able to you know, recognize him. He's a part of me. Yeah. He's able to teach me. That was his first time being on a stage, so I can just relate. And for him to be a legendary DJ for the legendary Red MC, right. to do a legendary thing on the Grammys, this just happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Grammys came that week that Kobe passed, mm-hmm. you know, say rest out RIP. And so, you know, say for that significance for him to be that person in the Grammys, because they had to make all that up that day, yeah. you know, saying that week to change things up. Yeah. He was able to signify that and, and make his mark in history, as well as, you know, showing that remembrance for DJs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that I'm a part of that. So now, you know what I'm saying? That's a part of me. I mean, I got a tattoo on my chest, two fours, and it's for COVID, it's for it. You can just tell that things are legendary, can't be can't be forgotten, can't be taken, and that's just, it was supposed to be like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So you could, it just kind of reminds you that life has its ways of signifying greatness. That's facts. So. That's facts. Yeah. That's so right. that was greatness. So that was All a piece right. of me. That's real. So, I mean, this is almost the end of the interview, but do you have any questions for us? Um, what y'all choose me for? Man, I've, we've been watching you grow over the years. You know, I'm not from here, but, you know, I still know how to recognize, you know what I'm saying, talent and growth and hunger. Mm-hmm. And so this is what the pilot, uh, the podcast is about. Okay. Uh, you know, people that have actually put the time in and work and have established themselves. Not gotcha. just any Rudy Poo that's trying to do it. You know, because in that case, the podcast wouldn't last that long. I'm humble and great. Humble and grateful, man. Humble and grateful. What you think about Dick Dopeness? Uh, well, we know. Man, tell them about it. I'm about to say, tell them about it. You know what I'm saying? Dick you know what I'm saying? If y'all ever need it, man, for. go to dickdubbins.com. Dick Dubbins is a great, um, it means anything. It's not just a t shirt, it's not just a clothing line. It is really a way of life. Um, be addicted to all the dopeness that you do in life. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
Yeah. Actually got some for y'all later on. I got some stickers for y'all, so it looks like they be on the door. You know what I'm saying? So that's all it is, man. Just be addicted to your dopeness, whatever you do. That's so right. y'all stay addicted to the So, topic. major question. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered? Ooh, um, ooh. That's a good question. I think I'll be remembered for me being me and being the best me that I could and creating a, creating a lane for myself and those that want to take from me and make it more than what it is. So I think if there was a lane for where I am and you like this lane and I can create it and you can make something off of it, then by all means, if I give somebody a, a spark to do something like this and make it greater, I hope I can do that for y'all, man. I hope I did it the best way that I know, and I hope y'all can learn and make it even greater. Mm. So I feel like every time I've definitely met you, like it's it's been genuine energy. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying? To where love. I can always be like, bro, I'm coming. What's one, up? One love, boys. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To where like our our kind of our relationship is a little bit different based off how I met you. Of right. course, through a lot of different means. Of course. And then from there, like I said, it's always just been like mutual respect. Yeah. It, it, you can feel certain rooms. You can feel certain things where it's yeah. like, bro, like, he ain't got to say nothing. Yeah. Like, hey, no, nah, he good. Like, he straight. Like, like one period. Love. You know what I mean? Love, and definitely your work ethic. You I appreciate know what I mean? it. For me, to where, like I said, for me, it's always the three pillars for my company is always affirmation, action, and accountability. Mm -hmm. So, Literally knowing that you have talk, told yourself every time, like, hey, first off, I got to do this, and mm -hmm. I will do this. Mm -hmm. And then going from there and saying, all right, I'm about to act on this. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I got to take this leap. Like, we talked about it earlier, kind of like in regards to how when you quit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That was a leap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, this so is I jumped a, in the pool. I jumped in the, you jumped in the pool. Holy <laughs> <whoa. Got laughs> man. You know what I mean? And then at that point, you knew that you had to be accountable for everything mm -hmm. that happened. Yeah. I think Man that's one thing. Draw. That's one thing that you gotta learn in life. If you're not gonna jump, you're gonna either, off get, you're gonna either get pushed or you're gonna either get 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 passed up. Mm -hmm. That's that's you ain't gonna you ain't gonna you're gonna get you're gonna stand there and keep waiting, you're gonna get pushed, or you're gonna get passed up. And if you don't jump and you get pushed, you better have, have you better grab your parachute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because if you ain't learned nothing that, that you put in your book bag and ain't enough to make a parachute. That, that splat gonna hurt. Ooh, yeah. And you have to try to that's climb hard. back up and jump again. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Cause you're gonna get punched yeah. either way. If yeah. you're not doing it or yeah. doing it, you're gonna get punched. And yeah. you wanna at least get punched for doing the effort, putting yeah. the effort forward. Yeah. And you just still bullshitting on the on on the porch. Usually the thing is when you jump and if you got a parachute, once you hit the ground, you're gonna have to have another cliff to fall off. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you want to jump again. You gotta jump again. Well, so you gotta yeah. repack the parachute. So I hope you. I hope you, <laughs> like, you gonna have. I hope you learn from the first fall. Thicker fall for the parachute. For real, next time. You gotta jump. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be a little softer fall. You gotta jump, man. If you ain't, if you scared to jump, man, don't get in the pool. Don't yeah. get in the pool. Don't. Don't get in the pool. It's so. messy. Yeah, it's fun. Don't get wet. Yeah, don't get in the pool. It's gonna be good. Always jump. Always jump. Always jump. Urban match. Hey, always jump. For sure. Always. But we, hey. But we up one. This is the More Than Luck podcast. I'm Fine Wine. I am Innocence. And we appreciate y'all yeah. being a part. Thank you, DJ. Yeah, Pyle. man. No problem, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Got, hey, addicted to dope. Yeah, we just live and do yourself a favor. Yeah. And, it's fun. Uh, yeah. We'll be back for more. Hey, Clown, man. Sponsor. Exactly. Cause, cause, <laughs> hey, that mother there? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <that's>, uh, <laughs>